Hello and welcome to Magic Gathering Strat, and this is Tobias. And I was asked by Mr. The Voter in the comments to do a deck tech video on my Breaking the Sundial deck for Modern. And this is the video, doing some deck tech, doing some review. And just to point out, I wrote an article on this deck on January the 12th, 2015. And you can look it up on magicgatheringstrat.com. You have to search for it because it's a little bit older, but in the essence, it's still true. Okay, but enough on the article, let's go into the deck. This is the deck list as it is right now, and it is two colors, red and white. But I have a three color version as well that I'm going to show you later. For now, I'm running 23 lands, and each land has a purpose. Arid Mesa, obviously, fetch land is uh, good to speed you up. And you can fetch basic lands and you can fetch the sacred foundry. And um, aside from, from mana, there is ghost quarters um, to have a slightly better matchup against Tron. Um, or a lot of the man lands, you want to shut them down and then you've got a lot of basics. You've got one rugged prairie to filter mana and one temple of triumph, which is an interesting card because of the scry effect. And you have two creatures that benefit from this scry effect. It's the flicker wisp and it's the glimmer point stack, both of them exile are permanent when they enter the battlefield and return it to the battlefield at the end at the beginning of the next end step this uh, term is pretty important in this deck and by doing this you can sometimes have multiple cries out of this temple of triumph okay that's the lands next up is protection um pastor exile a lightning bolt and lightning helix are 12 spells that keep me alive because this deck is relatively slow it's a mid-range deck you need a way to deal with early threats and these 12 cards do if those 12 cards are not enough wall of omens adds additional protection it's pretty solid against burn and you can get cards of it and it's a good target for the Flicker Wisp and the Glimmer Point stack as well. And it's in the curve even, because you can go turn two Wall of Omens, turn three Flicker Wisp your Wall of Omens, turn four Glimmer Point stack your Wall of Omens, and you will draw two additional cards. But this is only uh, the path of action when the combo fails. And the main combo piece is Sundial of the Infinite, which has a pretty unique ability in modern it lets you end your turn and that is pretty important it basically means if your opponent tries to use a fetch land during your turn you can counter it by ending your turn if your opponent casts a pestermite or a deceiver exarch at the end of your turn you can counter that by um, putting an end to your turn if your opponent uses um, any instant during your turn and you don't like it, you can end your turn. That way you can protect your creatures from removal spells sometimes. And you get an amazing amount of games where your opponent obviously does not read this card and does things you can punish them for. So this is not bad in modern. And as a little bonus, it stops the hive mind combo by itself. So if you are playing against the Amulet deck and he puts all his pacts on the stack and in your turn you have to pay for the copies of the pact that you received, you can just end your turn and nothing will happen. So overall, not the worst card to have main deck, even if the combo fails. And it combos with a lot of stuff. Um, it combos with Flicker Wisp, for example, and Glimmer Point Stack, which are essentially the same card. Flicker Wisp just is a flyer and it's cheaper, and Glimmer Point Stack has Witchlands. 
Both do the same. They exile another target permanent when they enter the battlefield and they return it to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. At the beginning of the next end step means this return effect only triggers once. So if at the beginning of your end step the exiled permanent with glimmer post triggers to re-enter the battlefield, you just end your turn and it never comes back. So pretty decent. And because it's mana intensive, you have to pay four mana for the Glimmer Point stack and one mana to activate the Sundial. Because of this, I have the Ether Vial, which um, gives you a lot of mana. It's just nice to while in the Flicker Wisp and then end the turn at the correct moment. Two more cards remain in the main deck, and both are great. Mimic Watt is. Um, an underplayed card in modern i am sure of it it's pretty decent in itself it triggers every time a creature dies a non-token creature dies uh, no matter if it's your creature or the opponent's creature and you can imprint this card and by this you can exile the card and this is in itself pretty good against all undying and persist creatures. You shoot down your opponent's Kitchen Fink by Lightning Bolt and have a Mimic Rat in play. Mimic Rat will trigger and you can remove the Kitchen Fink from the game and it won't um, go to the graveyard and persist won't trigger. And a second ability, for three mana you can put a token of the imprinted creature onto the battlefield it gains haste and you have to exile it at the beginning of the next end step same phrase here triggers only once so at the beginning of your end step you just end your turn and you get to keep the token forever pretty neat stuff i've had snapcaster mages under it and this is where the fun really starts because of the many uh, instants you play so decent stuff play it um, and the last card, Acroma. I've won some games with Acroma. It's pretty good against Jeskai Control, which doesn't see that many plays. But you can play it as a morph creature. And if you have Flicker Wisp or Glimmer Point stack available, you can target your morph. And at the beginning of your end step, when your exiled creature will return it will return unmorphed and you're getting a 6-6 six, six angel so if you're doing it right if you have three counters on your either while and the flicker wisp in hand you can morph it and if your opponent tries to get it down by lightning bolt or whatever you can save it by flicker wisp and then have a 6-6 six, six angel at the end of your turn okay that's the main deck next up sideboard the sideboard is pretty straightforward right now. I've got Ley Lines of Sanctity against Burn and against Combo Decks and against decks with a lot of discard. Um, pretty solid card, helps you a lot. I've got Verters against Affinity and against Splinter Twin. And if you're lucky, you can uh, fuse it and destroy an artifact and an enchantment sometimes very good very cheap and uh, high enough converted mana cost so spell snare won't counter it so good card i've got an additional mimic wet because if your opponent is playing an all creatures deck like a collected company deck mimic wet will be especially good uh, and well this card is so good against them um, I just played an additional one then. Um, I have a lot of graveyard removal. I don't need my graveyard at all, so I can cast Rest in Pieces. But uh, Rest in Peace will shut down Mimic Watt because uh, the imprint trigger only triggers when the creature goes to the graveyard. And if you are going to board in Rest in Pieces, you have to board out Mimic Watts. If you don't want this non bow, if you want to keep your combo, you can just play Relic of Progenitus in the place of Rest in Peace. Works too. And the last card, some decks are just too fast. They have too many creatures. And that is where Wrath of God comes in. That's where Wrath of God is for. But sideboard is still under construction. 
Um, so far, I like the results I get. I am thinking about Sun Titan, which might be a decent card for the sideboard in some situations. And um, well, there could be more life gain because uh, that sometimes is a problem. And because of the more life gain, you could run Kitchen Things. Oh, forgot two cards in the main deck, forgot the Blade Splicers. I run two Blade Splicers for additional pressure. Also good Flicker Wisps and Glimmer Point stack targets, but these could be Kitchen Things as well. Okay, that's the two color version of the deck. Let me show you my three color version. This is the Jeskai three color version of the deck. It has uh, pretty much the same uh, ground structure for Path to Exile, for Lightning Bolts and for Lightning Helix. And it runs for Wall of Omens, um, but only for Flicker Wisps and no Glimmer Point stacks. And um, I put in Restoration Angels because I have some creatures that I want to be able to save or to um, recycle the enter the battlefield effect. Flicker Wisp is one of them. Snapcaster Mage is the other and Kitchen Things is the third one with these effects. And Gaze of Sand Traft is some card that you want to be able to save. Why am I building a three color version of this deck? Well, Snapcaster Mage is just a card you want to have um, imprinted in your Mimic Red because this is just uh, awesome if you can make it happen. And um, the next reason for blue is Ghost of Sand Traft because the Exile, the Angel Token um, effect will trigger at the end of combat and only at the end of combat. So you can stop this trigger by using your Sundial of the Infinite and you will keep your tokens. Um, right now, I think the two color version is superior, um, not only because the mana base is a bit shaky with um, probably not enough blue mana sources right now, but uh, Ghost of Saint Treft is just not the best card in the current meta. It gets blocked by so many things and you have a hard time protecting it. So I think the two color version is better. Nevertheless, let's have a look at the sideboard. The sideboard has one addition and this is Supreme Verdict. And Supreme Verdict is better than Wrath of God because it cannot be countered. And that's it. Everything else is pretty much the same. I've got the Virtus, this time I run the Relic of Progenitus and I run Anger of the Gods because the deck overall is a little bit slower and has more problems with, um, with decks that rush you like, like Sue or something. So you might want to have the Anger of the Gods, but Anger of the Gods has the problem that it does not work with uh, your Mimic Wedge because the creatures will be exiled instead of put into the graveyard and you don't get the imprint trigger. And here's Rending Volley against Splinter Twin. Okay, now I want to show you a little outlook, what I'm working on. It's not much really, it's just an idea. Uh, give me a couple of seconds. Right now, I'm thinking about a black and white version of the deck. Uh, one reason for this is the tremendous enters the battlefield effect of Chittering Rats. If you manage to imprint Chittering Rats on your Mimic Wet, and if your opponent cannot cast uh, the, many of the cards he has in his hand, you basically win the game because you can have him put a card from his hand on top of his library every turn. And with Mimic Wet in play, you um, the the probability for this is, is high enough to, to make it worse. Why am I thinking about a white black deck? Because of the high toughness of the many creatures you see these days. Gurmig Angler has five toughness. The green guys that are getting played, Tarmogoyf and so on, they all have high toughness. And sometimes they are just too big for Lightning Bolt and Lightning Helix. And black has many ways to kill them and put them under the Mimic Wet, you have Ultimate Price, you have Go For This Road, you have Murderous Cut, and you have Shriek Maw. And Shriek Maw is another one that is nice with Mimic Wet because it can be evoked for two mana 
will kill a creature and then will be imprinted and then you can basically kill a creature each turn so pretty decent might be worth a try and if you have the sun dial of the infinite in play you get to keep your shriek more tokens so pretty nice and as a finisher you might want to run grave titan in the place of the angel and if you can imprint a grave titan which isn't legendary you can have a grave titan token every turn and get two uh, black two two zombies every turn and again if you have the sundial your grave titan never will leave play so that's it so far for this deck i hope you enjoyed this little deck deck review video and i'm going to bring some more videos of this amazing and fun to play deck soon stay tuned see you around soon